Thank you for listening or watching or whatever the heck you're doing to the Jack Vale Show with Madison. This is my co-host. Madison. <laughs> that's right. Madison. Uh, that's the name. And by the way, I want to let you know, we have our first guest here today. And if you have any questions for her, please feel free to blurt it out. You can even interrupt me. Amazing. Okay. Well, All right. We are here with an actress uh, who goes by the name of Lee Allen Baker. And uh, she's known for a lot of stuff. And it seems like every time we're hanging out or doing something together, uh, people know you from a particular show. Would you say one show more yeah, than like anything else? I would else say one show more than anything. Yeah. So thank you for being here. Yeah, my pleasure. Um, we, uh, what is that show? That show would be Good Luck Charlie. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, it is remarkable, actually, how often people pull you aside. I told you, it is nonstop. Yeah. I mean, I can't take six steps in like if I go to a Universal or any place like that or a big public place. Yeah. It's um, you can see people's eyes. You just see it. They say hello. And then their eyes get some sparkling and, you know, <laughs> oh, they're on to me. So it's not just like like you, you know, somebody's familiar, like like that's a familiar actor or actress. But that show, there's something about it. it's one of those special shows that people feel like they were kind of let into yeah, your life. Yeah. And you know, I think the difference too is like I'm not I'm not Angelina Jolie famous. Like if someone sees Angelina Jolie, they're they're it's a little intimidating. I'm like what I call living room famous. Where like I'm just in your living room day after day after day after day. So people become very familiar with me. It's like family. And so people do approach me like that. I get lots of hugs and lots of oh my god. Oh yeah. Mm, yeah, and yeah. I have criers. The criers are my favorite, where they're oh just gosh. so overwhelmed that they just burst into tears. Oh man! And it's and I know that it's not because they're meeting me. I, I know that it's because seeing me triggers memories of their childhood that were so precious and so sweet. Probably mm. sitting on the couch with their mom and dad. Mm -hmm. You know, the one show really at the time that the whole family could sit and watch and enjoy together. Yeah. So I know that that's the reason, and it's so sweet, and um, and I love it because to me it is a bond with that person because it's something that meant a lot to me too. Yeah. You know, it's something we have in common. Oh, we both loved that show. It meant a lot to both of us. How many episodes were there? A hundred. A hundred episodes? Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's incredible. I I know I found out last night that you directed two of them. I did. I directed mm -hmm. two episodes. How did that come about? Like what? How did that happen? You want to know the truth? Okay, so Eric Allen Kramer said he wanted to direct, and I said, "Well, I want to direct too." That's how it came about. Really? And you did yeah. you sort of say it in jest? Like, well, no. If he was going really to do it, I wanted to stab at it. Okay. Yeah. All right, and that's how it happened. And that's how it happened. And they were like, "Okay." How? Everybody wants to keep Mama happy, even yeah. on a set. <laughs> That's right. When Mama's happy, everybody's happy. <laughs> so, what was was that the first time you ever directed? Yes. And what was that experience like for you? It was great it because I had a team of people to watch my back. Mm. But if there's any place that you want to learn to direct, it's with a family that you love that wants to support you and care for you. So, wow. um, everybody had my back. It was great. Was it like that? It was like a family on yeah. the set. It was really? completely like a family. Mm. I mean. This was the most low drama set you could ever walk on in your really? entire life. That's awesome. Everybody wow. just loves everybody. And, and I th I'm sure there's something about, you know, it being a family show. No one is the same age or the same sex, really. I mean, like, there was boy, girl, everybody at different ages. You know, there's the crew was very eclectic. And everybody just kind of had their space to be themselves. Hmm. And there was no competition, certainly not with the actors. Like, you know, Bridget Mendler and I are not going to be doing the same things. Like, I'm not going on tour singing Ready or Not, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. everybody had their own niche, and we all just supported each other. And certainly if anybody had a complaint to make or if something wasn't going well, mm -hmm. it was they would come to me usually because we figured why should everybody be a Pain in the rear. Yeah. I, I've already taken that niche. It's, yeah. So I'll just do it. So anytime there was kind of a struggle, it was never between anyone on the set or the mm. crew. It would be us banding together to kind of struggle with Disney on what we wanted and what oh. they wanted. Okay. You know, the big oh, guys. Yeah. How yeah. are we gonna how are we gonna compromise on this situation? Yeah. The couch was a big issue on our show. They wanted to change the couch. In <laughs> fact, we came back one season and they had changed our couch. And I mean we were devastated. We didn't even know what to do. Like, how do you do the show without that car couch? Wow. So we had to do a whole episode and bring back the couch because yeah. the cast were just like not having. So we won the battle of the couch. We lost the battle of the new baby. Mm. We did not want a baby. 
we felt that that really? was irresponsible. We had too many children already. Couldn't we just get a dog? You know, and Disney was like, nope, we want to grow the show. So you will be having a baby. How, how many episodes do you think you saw? Maybe all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I don't know. I've the impact. Seen a lot. It's obvious. It, I mean, I remember it being on a lot, you know. Yes. And stuff for the kids. Um, yeah, it was one of those shows you it, could just always have on, like in the background, like whatever you're doing. I mean, and I would, I was young and I would like sit down and watch it too, obviously, yeah. but. It so was is, just, it, is it, is it kind of weird sitting here talking to the. No, I wouldn't <laughs> say it's weird. When I met you, I was like, oh my gosh, like the, it was kind of weird. So I was like, I've seen your face like my whole right. life. And now I'm in your kitchen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> eating your mom's yeah. famous Was meal. it weird right. meeting me for the first time? Because you're such a big fan of mine before you knew me. <laughs> was that weird at all? <laughs> See, obviously not true. <laughs> I <just> Cracks up. <laughs> My son's like, hey, mom, it's the pooter guy. <laughs> You're like, what? I'm like, what are you watching? What? <laughs> but no, he had told me about you guys because he, you know, had met your kids and, and everything. Yeah. So, yeah. but to me, it was just such a pleasure to meet you because you kind of understand where I'm coming from and what my day to day is. And, and, and when you go into public, what that's like, you know, I've been at dinner with you or people come up to you and take pictures of you. So we kind of, I feel like bonded over yeah. that. Yeah, I think so. It's, it's a little bit different though. A guy like me looks at somebody like you and they see that stuff happen and they're like, now see, that's real talent oh, really? right there. <laughs> you see, she's getting recognized cause she did something really, really valuable. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, um, uh, it's uh, it's true though. I you know what? Um, recently, uh, I want to talk about your career a little bit and some other stuff besides Good Luck Charlie because you did a bunch of other stuff. Yeah. Um, and uh, do are people like Will and Grace? How many episodes of Will and Grace were you on? Uh, I think it was on twenty six episodes of Will and Grace. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And. Um, and I did one of the reboot. Yes. Mm hmm. Las Vegas. Um, Las you were on Vegas. an episode of Las Vegas. I don't I know was. how many people remember that show, but I... I was Elvis. I was the female Elvis impersonator. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, you were? I was. Oh, my goodness. What See? is this? Las Vegas. So, Las Vegas is a show that James Caan was in. James Caan died recently. Mm -hmm. I was like, what the heck is happening to these actors? Ray Liotta. I know, just dropping Tony dead. Sirico's gone. James Caan. Like, the what godfather. Like, all these guys. It's All these mobsters are like, it's really weird. Mm. Um, going on this this year, but James Con, did you get to work with James Con? Did you meet him? Did you? I got to meet him. Oh, you did. Because I'm a fan. I think he's a great actor. Yes. You know, I mean, yes. James Con. Yes. Yeah. It'd yeah, be yeah. Like, I would probably pass out if I had ever met Robert Duvall. You know, like he's so good. I think. Dude. Oh, we could talk like about Robert actor Duvall. That there has ever been the apostle. I think he's amazing. Oh. That man can act his face off. I'm oh. telling you, he is so good. Do you know the story about uh, Phenomenon, the movie Phenomenon no. with John Travolta? Yeah, yeah, I know you remember the movie, the movie yeah. right? So he's in that movie. He plays uh, John Travolta's doctor, right? And then there's a scene upstairs where they, they look up to like the second story of a house or a building or something, and he moons everybody. I don't know if you remember <laughs> that, but there's this quick little scene where yeah. he moons, and you see it right there, and he's like shaking his, in front of the, the window. And then he said that he did like a – he wanted to do um, – he thought about doing it himself, but they got a butt double or something like that for it or whatever. That's what I remember yeah. about Robert Duvall. He got a butt double. He, he mooned somebody on Phenomenon. There you go. Yeah, it was a good movie. He, he's great. I think he's great. I love Robert Duvall. And James Caan, he's another one of those that I'd say it, he has his niche that he does, but boy, he does it well. And uh, I got to meet him, and he was lovely. I did not get to do scenes with him. You didn't get to no, do scenes with him? No, my scenes were with Josh Dumal. Oh. Listen. Is that how you say it, Dumal? Yeah, I think it's so. Not, That's how I say it. Some people say Duhamel. Oh, really? Yeah. Because oh. it's spelled like with an H. Yeah, I think it's Jumal. I love that guy. He's great. He's, oh, he's a really, terrific. He's a really nice person. A yeah? really good guy. Wow. So approachable, so friendly, so down to earth. Sometimes you walk on someone's set and you know it's their set because yeah. it's their set. You know, they're not very welcoming, welcoming to people. But he was just like, hey, what's up? He was so welcoming and kind and just really down to earth guy. That's great. Yeah, I it's just it was such a good show. A lot of people don't remember Las Vegas, and it was such a fun show. I have a, a fun, fun fact show. about Las Vegas, if you want to hear it. Yeah, I do. Okay. So I grew up in this little town, Murray, Kentucky, not far from Tennessee, about two hours, 15 minutes from here. And my uncle had this 
woman that he dated, just this love of his life. And he had a niece that lived in, or she had a niece that lived in my hometown, mm. pretty close, like right across the way from where my parents had lived. And um, her name was Molly Sims. And so Molly and I went to school together. Now, she was a year younger than me, but we were at the same high school together. And friends, not not like besties, we were in different grades, but definitely friends, mm-hmm. definitely loved her family, a great, great group of people. And her brother was in my class. And so Molly became a supermodel and then um, starred in Las Vegas. And so... Anyway, backtrack. So when I, the only pageant I've ever done in my life, I've did two, two pageants in my life. One when I was little because I really wanted to do it because the girls got to come out in pretty dresses. Yeah. So my mom bought me a pretty dress and she even sewed a bell into the hem. So when I walked, it would jingle. And I had those patent leather shoes and little <laughs> fold down socks. This is before pageants were actually sexy for kids when you were actually just cute. you know. Yeah, yeah. And it was my turn to walk on stage and I was mortified. I couldn't do it. Mm. They tried to bribe me with balloons to come out, with food to come out. I would not do it. <laughs> that is so my personality. I am so like wanting to be center stage. And then there's a part of me that's like, ain't going to do it. Not doing it. Not having it. Don't want anybody to see me. Uh-huh. Right? So the next pageant that I did, I, I entered it because there was a trip to Mexico on the line. And I thought, mm. well, gosh, how many p- girls my age live in this town? I'll just give it a try. So I won that, and the next year Molly Sims won, and so I crowned her. Mm. Oh. So Molly Sims starred in Las Vegas. Yeah, I remember. Oh I know exactly who she yes. is. Yes. Wow, she's that's actually, crazy. She's not only beautiful; she's a very, very smart businesswoman. Very smart. Did you talk to her when you when you went there? Yeah. On the set. Yeah. yeah, she was there that day. Oh, that's you so never exciting. Know. Yeah. 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 How many days so. did it take to shoot what you did? About a week. Wow. Yeah. It's incredible. I'm gonna look it up. I gotta. I mean, I don't know how easy it is to find those now. But yeah, I'm going to look for it. Yeah. Did you know recently um, we so my wife and I have this ritual and I don't know how we got locked into this, but uh, everybody loves Raymond. Yes. Great show. Yes. I love Patricia Heaton. Uh, she's amazing. I, yeah. I love her, too. Uh, and King of Queens. Those are like our two go to shows. Oh, my gosh. OK. <laughs> so uh, and I did not know I had no idea that you were in King of Queens until <laughs> oh recently. We were watching late at night, and Sherry was asleep. Uh-huh. And usually I stay up longer because she just can't do it. She's usually out by Same. like 10 or something. Yep. Okay, so I'm up until 12, 1 o'clock. And I just I keep King of Queens on. Even if I'm doing something on my laptop, I like having it because it's familiar. It's in the background or yeah. whatever. And, uh, and I realized... <laughs> The episode that you were in, it's one of the great, it's the one of the funniest, Is it? Okay, actually one of the a, funniest episodes. There's a story behind this episode. Mm. So I had just gotten married. And my husband and I <laughs> decided to not work out and I guess eat a lot of food. So we were both at the heaviest <laughs> we'd ever been. You know, some people gave yeah. the freshman 15. Well, I gave the marriage 15. Yeah. And they had called and wanted me to audition for that show. And it was supposed to be a voiceover part. And I thought, okay, great. It's a voiceover. No one will see me. I'll have time to drop some weight before I get back on camera. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. But for some reason, they wanted me to come in live. And I'm like, I don't know why. So I came in and I read it for them. I had my head in the page. I mean, it's a voiceover role, right? Yeah. yeah. And I get a call two days later. They want you to do that part, only they're not going to make it voiceover. You're going to be on camera. Oh, <laughs> like, for the, for the no. very... Wow. So I have to be honest with you. That is one episode of my work that I have never seen. I've never seen it. You didn't episode. watch it. No. You've never seen it. I've never seen it. I've seen it like a dozen times. <laughs> oh, my word. No, I've, I've seen, never seen I've it. Seen it for, I've seen it so many times. And every time I see it... Had no idea. Just didn't realize it because it's at the end and it's, you know. Yeah. But it was. It was a voiceover gig for you. It was a voiceover, yeah. But then they decided last minute to have me appear at the end. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. So it wasn't supposed to happen like that. No. It was all supposed to be voiceover. Wow. That is another set that was one of the most friendly that I've ever been on. That is really? another example of what a really good set should be. Wow. King of Queens. Leah is fantastic. Yeah. He's wonderful. I mean, everybody wow. was just super friendly and nice the way a set should be. That's incredible. I I hear that they still like stay in touch and stuff. They're I'm still sure like they close do. They're lovely people. Yeah. Um, you know, there are some so sets great. that are just great and some sets that are just not. Tell me a set that is just not. Shall I? <laughs> I've kept my mouth shut for so <laughs> many years. It, oh, really? Can nah, It's it's up to you. You're you're it's your so, comfort level that matters. Will and Grace was a tough set. It was tough. It was a tough set. No kidding. No kidding. Yeah. Just to just People behind the scenes. I think that it is was such a high pressure set because there was so much expectations placed on that show being a success. 
Oh. That I feel that everyone just felt pressure. I know that when I got onto Good Luck Charlie, I told all the kids, I said, listen, you've wanted this your whole life, your whole 10 years. Like I've wanted it my whole 35 years. You know what I mean? Yeah. We've wanted this our whole lives. So let's appreciate it and enjoy every single moment of it and realize you've got your dream right here. We're living it. We're doing it. Yeah. Come to work grateful because I just watched the pressure cooker get to everybody. I mean, everybody, producers, you name it, above the line, below the line. That was a high pressure set. Mm. And it seemed everyone felt the pressure on what they were going to do next, how they were going to break out. You know, that show came about right at the time where it was always television actors did television mm. and film actors did film mm. and never the twain shall meet. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. right towards the end of that show, it, everything started to kind of mix and mingle. Yeah. And now look. Yeah, now it's like everybody does everything, yeah. you know? Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was high pressure. That that I mean, I'm not saying that the the people weren't fun and I didn't like them. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying it was it was intense and it wasn't always the most welcoming environment to walk into. And especially there was always some hotshot big star, you know, they did a lot of stunt casting on that show and some of them were wonderful people. You know, and others, it's like, oh, don't look them in the eye. And I, listen, I've been on that show for, at that point, you know, I'd done it for like, what, five, six years? I, I don't want to be told I can't look somebody in the eye. Wait, wait, hold on you a know, second. Like, is that, is that a, that's a real that's thing? That's a thing. That's really? a thing. I always thought that was like some, like, I don't know. Just I mean, yeah, like we told people those... on our set, but it was like, don't look at Charlie in the eye. She's three and she doesn't <laughs> like people to stare that's at her. Funny. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah. that's like a baby throwing that's a tenter different. tantrum. Yeah. That's different than yeah. like Madonna. You know what I mean? So. I always I always wondered about that, though, because you always hear that, like, don't do this and don't do that. Yeah. And that's a real thing. Yeah. And closing the set. Mm -hmm. Oh, OK. So I'm allowed to come on the set for my scenes that they're in. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, I need to go to my dressing room. Mm. Okay, I just don't get into that. Everybody's just a person. I guess mm -hmm. I just don't worship actors. I just don't think of them as people, and it just is bizarre behavior to me to create a set with that kind of stress. Yeah. Yeah, Why? I feel like tension would just be like... Yeah, it's through the roof. Yeah. That's Yeah, that sounds, that sounds terrible. Yeah. I'm glad I've never met anybody quite like... I mean, I've met people like that, but nobody specifically said, don't look this person right. into, the, into right. the eye, you know? Yeah. Although, you know what I did do one time is I looked, I was in, on this um, uh, TV show. I can't even remember what it was called, but uh, I was on one episode of a TV show with Jim Gaffigan. Jim Gaffigan had yeah, this uh, didn't funny, know that. funny guy, right? Yeah. It, he was, uh, oh, it was called My Boys. It just popped into my head. Uh, I think he was on TBS for a while or something okay. like that. So uh, there was a scene in the diner. And this is actually, I guess, somewhat off topic, but I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, <laughs> because I looked at the camera right into the lens okay totally by mistake right because it, it was out it, they were shooting outside but they were shooting all of us inside this little diner and you couldn't you'd look out the window and you couldn't really see where the you cameras can't were see. i've done <laughs> it with it right in front of my face you and, just can't see sometimes but i was so embarrassing because um they had to stop the production oh no everybody stopped the director came in and you know jim was there and everything and they're like uh you uh don't look at the camera. Oh. And they were real serious about it. I'm like, oh, I, I didn't. It wasn't me. I swear I, I didn't look uh, at the camera. The guy in the green shirt? Oh, crap. <laughs> I guess it was me. Oh, my. It was the most embarrassed. I was so embarrassed. I'm like, I was the only guy with the green shirt. <laughs> so it had to be me. They knew it was me. They saw me looking at the camera. I got caught. <laughs> you got busted. I didn't even know I was doing anything wrong. Yeah, it's, I think that that is so tricky. There are times where I've had to stop my own scenes where I've been like, I just looked in the camera. Mm. you know mm -hmm. like that it just catches your eye you don't yeah you don't think about it it's yeah. just there i mean yeah. your eyes are gonna hit it at some point you know right. yeah this was really embarrassing though because i was an extra oh, you know gosh. i got i got this gig for the day where you know you go make 50 yeah. bucks yeah and uh i don't know i was probably 21 <laughs> 22 something like that oh no oh no <laughs> Anyways, um, do you so the directing thing? I want to talk about that real yeah. quick. Because good luck, Charlie. You did two episodes. Mm -hmm. uh, were they like they weren't back to back, right? They were like no. And I was pregnant when you directed. Yeah, both or I think I was pregnant. Yeah, I think so. When no kidding. Both. Yeah. When you when you came away from that experience, like the second time, did you mm -hmm. feel like I want to do more of this? I want to do this again, or do you? Yeah. Did you not well, like it, it as was much? well. Okay, so I loved and I directed some other. Uh, shows too um 
that were within the Disney family. And I just feel that when you're directing television, it's you don't get to, it's not as much of a creative outlet. You're more of a communications tool. Mm. Like really it's your job to facilitate what is happening and being captured on camera with what the network is wanting. Okay. So communication is really my strong point. So that part I thrived with, but it kind of left me, you know, wanting more as far as a creative outlet goes Yeah. for directing television. Got right? it. Right. Yeah. I think single camera would be different. You've got more freedom of camera. You know, you can't reinvent the wheel with, with multicam. Mm. It's already been invented and it works perfectly. So there's not a lot of different things that you can do. Um, but single camera, I think would be great. Um, you know, I got to try my hand at executive producing, which I loved in the movie, bad hair day that I did for Disney channel. Mm -hmm. So I helped shape the story. I helped write the dialogue, design the dresses, do the hair. I mean, you name it. Wow. I would get up at 4am every morning to edit that movie with the editor via phone. Really? Wow. He was in Canada. Wow. So there isn't a single frame of that film that my fingerprints are not on. And that I love. That really? was great. That's awesome. That's great. So, and you've done a ton of voiceover work, not just that episode of King yeah. of Queens, but you've done like a lot. So how yeah. did, how That's did that happen? That's kind of how I got started really more was in voiceover. Yeah. Why is that? Did you choose that or did you just have the opportunity? And then Yeah, because I studied in college, I studied dialects. And mm -hmm. so I kind of was proficient at doing lots of different dialects. I mean, when I first moved to California, I'm telling you, I talk like this. That's amazing. <laughs> I had a really strong Southern accent and... And I had to have it practically beaten out of me. And once you, once you, you know, I had to learn the phonetics. So it wasn't mm -hmm. just sounds. I mean, I learned every sim symbol that I could write down. And I can read phonetics, which looks like it's a roadway map of sounds, basically. Instead uh -huh. of letters, they're a symbol equals a sound. And you put mm. them together on how the word is sounded, not necessarily how it's spelled. And so once you learn that, then you learn the symbols for different dialects. And suddenly you can read, you know, New York, Italian, Russian, um, you know, English, all of these. Yeah. I'm not very good at it. Really? Yeah. I mean, you said that earlier that I got like the Italian thing, like I can do, do that. You have, like, sometimes you go to this like New York thing, like this yeah, New York Italian thing. Yeah. That's so, that's because I do this voice because I do pranks and so I'll do prank calls mm -hmm. and I'll be an old lady, an old man. And so I kind of play with it, you know, a little bit there, but um, I'm not, I can't, you tell me to do like Russian or, you know, German or, or even the UK, like I can't do a British accent to save my life. Really? No. That's so odd. <laughs> I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to respond <laughs> in the same, you should, it'd be totally embarrassing. Really, really awful. Cause I figured you'd just like, I mean, cause I've heard Could you do. slip into a few accents and I was like, oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. I, there's a, there's a couple that I do and that's it. You know, like yeah. I can impersonate certain people and stuff, but I stick to my little thing that I can do, yeah. you know, and that's it. Um, something that probably nobody knows. I'm just going to All right. hope that nobody knows this. All right. Oh goodness. Is that you're, um, a cake maker. Would we call me that? Have oh, you, wait. I saw the pictures. They're wait. amazing. I mean, I would absolutely call you that. Yeah. Um, Do you enjoy it? it? Okay, so I I have children who um, have celiac disease, and I have a pretty severe reaction to gluten myself. So when my baby was born and they would go to birthday parties, everybody would have these big cakes, and my yeah. kids couldn't have any. Mm -hmm. So I, even though my name is Baker, I am not much of a baker. <laughs> I'm more the improv, you know, I'm an improvising chef. That's me. I'm like a cooking on the fly kind of yeah, person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Following a recipe was very stressful for me. I would, I literally have to obsessively check measurements like 10 times. And I will inevitably screw something up in a recipe. I will. But once your baby can't eat a cake, mm -hmm. then... <laughs> You start researching, yep. watching little YouTube videos. Yeah. And the next thing you knew, I made Griffin a birthday cake and it wasn't bad. And then I thought, I'm pretty good artistically. I'm, I'm a pretty good artist. I, I can paint really well. I can decorate well. I can build things. And so I knew I can decorate a cake. Even if it doesn't taste good, it's going to look good. Yeah. <laughs> right? So I kind of learn some tricks, like you can soak cakes in a soak so your cake won't be dry. And so I would make these butterscotch soaks and then I would make these drizzles Ooh. on it. And then there's this thing that came out called a naked cake, which have you ever heard of naked cake? No. Yes. Okay, so naked cakes <laughs> really? are where you frost a cake and then you scrape it off so you can see some of the cake through it. And it looks very art artistic, huh. but it's, it's really not. It's really for someone who can't frost a cake. <laughs> 
Really? So if you can't do it smoothly, then you can scrape it off and it looks very artistic. Yeah, it's like And aesthetic. then I would put fresh flowers and things. So the next thing you know, I, I had I did Bridget Mendler's uh, bridal shower cake. I, I, no um, way. Myself and the other moms on the set, Bradley's mom and Jason's mom and Mia's mom, yeah. all threw her a bridal shower. And so it was a big cake and it was my first big, big cake to do. It was really beautiful. So I got to where I was pretty good at it. I don't know. I'm but good it, at decorating them. But it started with like a health, you did it for health concerns. Yeah, I did it for reasons. health reasons. I didn't want to ever work with artificial colors. They're terrible for your health. So mm-hmm. I didn't want to use any artificial dyes. My children mm-hmm. and I were mm-hmm. both allergic to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I didn't want any gluten in it. And at one point I didn't even have dairy in my cakes. Um, but so they're really delicious and very pretty. So yeah, now I'm going to do that, my niece's wedding cake. Yeah, well, that's the thing is that it went from like trying to be to have a healthy cake to like make it really, really good yes. looking. It got to where, let me just tell you something. When I would make a cupcake or a small cake to take to a birthday party, all the kids would shift their focus from the actual birthday cake to like, I want what Baker's having or I want what Griffin's having. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. It's all about the presentation, <laughs> yeah, right? It is. Yeah, mm-hmm. my uh, My kids love to cook, Chris and Jake. And uh, they have a, this thing about the whole presentation of the yes. food and what it looks like. and how first you eat with your eyes. Exactly, right. yeah. You start eating immediately. Yeah. That's, a, that's incredible. So um, back to, um, to kind of what you, um, what you do. I got to ask you this question because I, I have, I have um, people have asked me these questions. Okay. And I just think this is a good one. All right. What is a, a role... Mm-hmm. that you would really, really love to play? What is a character that you would love to play? Have you ever thought about that, that you've never been given the opportunity to? Yeah, I'm... Something that's so far away from me is really? what I would love to do mm. that doesn't look at all like me. Because when... Some people are surprised when they hear that I am have done certain voices. Even casting directors are like, you did that voice? Oh my gosh. Doesn't mm. sound at all like you. I do think there's real fun in really throwing yourself into something because most of the time, really, as an actor, you're cast as yourself. I mean, yeah. I'm not saying I'm just like Amy Duncan, but that lunatic part that's, like, fun and kind of zany and kind of crazy, it was a good <laughs> fit, you know? I've yeah. maybe walked that walk a time uh-huh. or two, I'm just saying, <laughs> you know? Um, so something that is a real departure from that would be, like, every actor's dream, you know? Throw on an ugly outfit, wash off my makeup, and stick me in an accent, and I think I'd be in heaven, you know? Yeah. Which is really fun to be able yeah. to flex your muscles because sometimes in television, you're not always afforded the opportunity to show your real skills and what you can do. Like mm-hmm. people don't know I was trained in Shakespeare, mm-hmm. you know, that, mm-hmm. yeah. So, wow. and now here I do like comedy yeah. most of the time. Wow. So it's interesting. interesting. Yeah. What about, what about a, a, uh, a person? Like if, uh, is there an actor that you have never gotten to work with that you would just, you'd love to just spend some time with? Jack Vale. <laughs> It's a great answer. This is your opportunity. Let's do it. It's a great answer. All right. <laughs> we'll have to figure something out. You know, I was thinking about that. I really, I've so enjoyed, I could immediately think of actors that I've worked with that I just really enjoyed working with that were a blast. Mm-hmm. Um, but to think of ones that I haven't worked with, you know. Robert Duvall. Robert Duvall. Yeah. Let's mm-hmm. go. Let's go big. I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't be mad at that. I would not be mad. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, I would. Mm-hmm. I would have to really snap myself out of my job being on the ground. He, he's that good. Is there is there anything that you feel like? Um, like, where is your zone? Do you have a zone where you? I mean, you told me what you might like to play. That is right. something that you haven't done before. But where, like, when it comes to family friendliness, let's mm-hmm. say. So you got you know think of the ratings and different types of movies and stuff like yeah. that. Is there something you would want to stay within? Yeah, look, I'm not a porn star, okay? Let me just say that right here and now. I'm not. I'm not into it. Yeah, uh, if we, I, could, we did some research, couldn't find anything. Couldn't find anything. Like, yeah, like if, right. we, if I wanted to do that, I would have done that. <laughs> I did not go that route. Yeah. Right? I think that was a good decision. Thank you. I think so, too. <laughs> it's very smart. I think so, too. So, but interestingly, after Good Luck Charlie and the success of that show, you would be shocked at the offers and the roles that I got. <laughs> Of, oh, they're, are they trying to get you out of, of the squeaky like, clean I was like, image oh or what? Oh my gosh. Like, there was a role. I don't even know if I can say this on this. We'll be very careful. I'll be very careful. <laughs> okay. There was a role that I was supposed to be on. They wanted me on this, I think it's some show for stars or something like that, with um, Patrick Swayze. No. Oh, Stewart. Yes. Oh. 
Second guess. Got it. Yes, <laughs> Patrick Stewart. And I love Patrick Stewart. I think he's great. But I don't love him that much. Like it, They wanted me to perform <laughs> a certain act with him. Oh, and I was like, gotcha. oh, great. Okay, so I see where they're going with this. Disney mom gets down and dirty. And I just, mm-hmm. I was like, no. Yeah. yeah. I'm not doing that. <laughs> Can I tell you something? Please. I don't want to cut you off, but... <laughs> I I am known for my family friendliness, which is great. This is a brand that I've built, right? Did I just smash it to a million pieces? No, 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 no. Okay, good. Oh my god, <laughs> that's not that's not what I'm getting at at all. What I'm going to say is, uh, this is something that happened to me one time. Somebody sent me an email. It was from a production company. From oh, it was a uh, Spike. You know the network yes, TV show yes, Spike Spike TV. Spike TV. So they reached out to me. They said they're coming out. They got this new show coming out. I am perfect. Oh my. Perfect for this role. Yeah. Perfect for yeah. it. Jack Vale is perfect for this role. I'm a professional bowler, married guy, kids. I'm like, oh, this is great. I like the bowl. How did they know? Yeah. I'm so excited to do this. And uh, they sent me the script. Yeah. It was, it was like halfway what you're talking about. It was yes. like, what is this? I was mortified. I'm like, how do you? How do you write right. this and say, you know, go from would bowling be balls for this? to this, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. But why, they, they're telling me I would be perfect for this. They must have not had any idea what I did. I don't know. Do they not have any idea or is it more like, ha ha let's, 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 see, let's if we can, see if we can get the squeaky clean to come over to the dark side. I maybe. don't know, but I was like, listen, yeah, yeah. I'm not that, mm-hmm. right? It, I was just not interested. Yeah. You just said no, or no. did you? Have you ever been presented with something though from somebody where you looked at it and said, "This is not appropriate for me"? Would you guys change it to this, or do you just say no? Listen, this one was so bad that I was like, "There's no it's way." It's a hard no. <laughs> it's just a hard no. <laughs> got it. Got it. Like, did doors Pat, closed? Don't come knocking. It's no. Did Did they end up making it? Yes, and I knew a girl that was the stand-in for the role that they wanted me for. Ooh. And she said to oh, me, what did she say? oh my gosh, she said it was pretty much straight up porn. I'm oh, so glad that no. you did not do that. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a no. good decision. Wise choice. Either way, you would have got <laughs> locked into it and showed up and realized and been like, you know what? Yeah. yeah. That's awful. Yeah. So speaking of squeaky clean uh, images. Uh-huh. Uh, okay. <laughs> family camp. Family camp came out. Yeah. Um, wow, I, what a change of subject. <laughs> <laughs> We're going talk about one extreme Listen, to the next. That's okay. You know. Um, but Family Camp came out. I saw like um little you know, ads were coming up on Facebook and stuff like that. I think that's how I found out about it. And uh we went and saw it. We actually saw it with you. Yeah. In the theater. And Chris and Chanel and the kids the and you know, family. a whole bunch of us were there. And it was really good. Thank you. Did you, um, have you, when that came out, did people start to recognize you from that movie? Yes, and it's that is really exciting. When someone goes, we went to a restaurant in Eagleville, this tiny little Tennessee town, and yeah. there's a really great Mexican restaurant there. And It's not Eagleville. It's not? It's Eagleville. Oh, sorry, it's Eagleville. <laughs> yeah, Eagleville. Eagleville. Yeah, sorry, it's I'm trying to a, learn. I, I, it's also not Mount Juliet. I get busted a lot for that yeah, one. It's, it's Mount Juliet. Yep. Mount Juliet. Yeah. Mount Juliet. Yes. And so Eagleville is kind of so, like Shelbyville. Yeah, it's like Shelbyville. 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 So it was an Eagleville. It was. <laughs> and <laughs> you kind of have to swallow it a little bit. Yeah, yeah you really do. Well, it gets stuck in there. <laughs> I know. And there are lots of pictures being taken, lots of comments and, and meeting people uh, that were surprised to see me in Eagleville because yeah. why would I be in Eagleville? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. They're right. sitting there thinking, what is she doing here? Right. And I get that. That is weird. <laughs> um, but on my way out, there was a table of six and they stopped me and they just said, we just want to tell you we loved family camp. Aww. And so mm. every now and then I do get the person that's seen and loves family camp mm-hmm. and it's really refreshing. Mm-hmm. It's really nice. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cause that's a funny, good movie. It just, you know, it's streaming now. So did you know, yeah, that's right. It was, uh, we saw it in theaters. Yeah. Nowadays, you know, what's really weird is like right after it comes out in theaters, it's like available to stream right away. In fact, like Maverick's coming out pretty soon to oh stream. Oh my gosh. Like, it's weird how quick it's happening now. Yeah, it is so fast. I mean, I think ours was in theaters for a month, maybe five weeks, and then the one week in between, and then it was streaming. Yeah, uh, you get an op- You don't have to wait anymore. Yeah. And I remember back in the day, E.T. came out in theaters. Oh, my gosh, and it was like, like an eternity to oh, wait forever. for that. What? It was forever. 
Yeah, you couldn't even rent it or anything no. for like almost 10 years or something like oh, that. Wow. Like yeah. a, it was a long time. Yeah. It's crazy. It's really weird. Yeah. So. Did you direct family camp at all? Or were you just Um That's funny. If you actually ask the director, he'll say, She probably directed more than she should have. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not always the best at okay. staying in my lane. But um <clears throat> this was such a gracious uh crew cast and director mm -hmm. that he was really very open to which is what made the movie great is mm. that he was open to the actors like what if we did this or what if we did this it was really a collaboration um so it was that was really fun that's awesome to take scenes and directions that they are not anticipated on the page to go in uh -huh. which really breathes life and energy into the film is just um, I think that's what it's all about because yeah. sometimes scenes can lie. There's a scene in Family Camp that, on the page, lied you know quite flat and was quite a downer, and and now in the film it's actually one of the funnier scenes and it really gives um, some energy to it and some laughter and levity yeah. right before things do turn and get heavy, which okay. really kind of highlights the difference when you've got something really joyous and then something heavy falls, it really lands hard. Oh, so yeah, it totally. really made an impact. I is it, do you think, is it a movie for everybody or is it a movie for the church for like for Christians? Cause it's a lot of Christian based. Yeah. It's stuff a faith based movie. movie. Um, yeah. but you know, I think this is a movie for everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I have a Muslim friend who went and saw it and loved it. Great. You know, mm -hmm. and his response to me was, you know, it just made me realize I've, I've kind of gotten away from my relationship with God, even though our religions view God differently. Um, it still had the same message. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And mm -hmm. the message of family the, the importance of family, the importance yeah. of marriage, your marriage yep. the importance yep. of your children, the importance right. of we are here for a small time. We need to make the best of it and put what's important first. Mm -hmm. You know, and doing that while you can laugh yeah. and be silly and watch a funny movie is just great all around. I yeah. think. That was the underlining series. You weren't there with us, were you? No, I couldn't make it. Okay. So that was the underlining seriousness of it, but um, the, there's a bee sting uh, oh segment gosh, that, that was so funny. pretty hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. Actually really made me laugh loud. It was really funny. Very funny. There's a few really funny moments in that movie, I think, that had me laughing out loud. So you can stream it now. Yeah. You can buy it. You can mm -hmm. rent it. Whatever. And you can watch it with your kids and with your grandparents and husbands and it's for everybody. Yeah. There was a video that I saw of um, like people were posting little videos and one that I saw was the day that it came out supposedly on DVD, I guess, or something, and they mm -hmm. went and they couldn't find it, and the little girl was all upset, and so they had to go, like, go somewhere else to find it or something like that. Yes. So it was yes. sold out. It was sold out a lot, suppose. The DVD sold out. Yeah. So get it while you can. Go somewhere yeah. else and look for it because it's selling out. That's right. Uh, what else is, are, are you working on something else like right now? that I am. I'm, I'm getting ready to take off to do a film in Texas. Great. Where I don't play a mom. Or wow. Listen, okay. I, it's been a long time since I've not played a mom. Uh -huh. Probably Las mm -hmm. Vegas playing Elvis. You excited? Uh, I am Elvis excited. Is... Yeah, I play an angel. Did you right. sing in, in the Las Vegas thing? Did you actually like I do... didn't, no. But there you're impersonating no Elvis. I'm impersonating, yes. I'm okay. a female Elvis impersonator. In, uh, oh, in my Las gosh. Vegas. Can you, is there something, can you do, can you do Elvis? Can you, Oh, my like, gosh, no, I can't. Uh -huh. Oh, oh. No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> I know to stay in my gonna, lane too at times. I am gonna. I'm gonna look <laughs> that up. But you should I'm see so it. I to know that. that I had like this velour silver with rhinestones outfit, and I had the Elvis wig. Oh, and, yes. yeah. It was a sweet storyline, actually. That's cool. Yeah. So, when did you move to um, from Kentucky? You went to L.A. to pursue acting? When yes, you were... as soon as I graduated high school. I moved when I was 18. Wow, really? I mean, my mom, I, she was like, I will, I will never forget my mother's face when my parents flew me out to Los Angeles yeah. and left me there at the University of Southern California. Mm. My parents had never really, they've traveled a little bit, but they had uh -huh. not really been out of our small hometown very much. And certainly not to a big city. They had traveled places. They'd been to the Caribbean, places like that. But they'd never been to a really big city. So we were staying at a hotel, and they were trying to cross the street. You know, there's the crosswalk sign, and it's got the guy walking. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, no walk, no walk, no walk. Yeah, yeah. So my parents would start out, and then the hand would come up, no walk, and start blinking. And my mom and dad would run back. Mm. <laughs> they'd run back the other way. <laughs> they didn't understand. And finally they realized, oh, no, it flashes for a long time. That's just to warn us that we need to make haste Hurry up. and get across it's the like street. It's like a yellow light. Yes, yeah. yes, it's like a yellow light. Get going yeah. to the other side. Yeah. So there were so many fun things like that. Yeah, yeah. I'll never forget when I was at USC and I got hit by one of the parking arms. 
you know, that allows you in and out, because I'd never seen any of those before. Mm-hmm. You don't have Gosh. those in a small town. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just mm-hmm. walking to class, nailed on the head. I was on the floor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so what, when you first moved there, did it take a while to get started? Like, what, how do you have direction when you're 18, 19, yeah. and you're trying to pursue acting? City. Where do you go? Who do you talk to? How do you befriend the right people? Like, what do you do? Um... You know, I'm the worst at befriending the right people. I am really? <laughs> I am the worst. You end up with the wrong friends because, or what? No, not that. It's that I go with who I really like genuinely as a friend. Oh, got it. I'm not one of these that mm-hmm. wants to go to barbecues and hobnob with people that I don't know or like in the industry. I don't I'm the latter. I just, yeah, if I don't like them, I don't want to go, right. mm. you know? And that's what I loved about Good Luck Charlie or certain shows. Or, oh, these are people I would go have a barbecue with. These are people oh. I would genuinely hang out with. Mm-hmm. Nice. Those people, not so much. I wouldn't hang out with them. It's not worth my time, right? Yeah, yeah. So so how long did it take you after you moved there to, like, so to do something? So I got in, I was studying the theater program there with an emphasis in Shakespeare, University of Southern California. Um as soon as I graduated, I right after graduation, I got a pilot. Wow, really? So people were like, you'll never be able to do it. It's like catching lightning oh, in yeah. a bottle. Right. Wow. You'll never be able to do it. So mm. not only did I get a pilot, I got a pilot that got picked up. Yeah. It was called The Last Frontier. Okay. Mm. And it actually was The Last Frontier for me for a long time. Because after that, I booked pilots. I booked them, but nothing got picked up. Really? It was like a long, it was, I didn't get a full series where I was a series regular that stuck and got on air until Good Luck Charlie. Oh, okay. huh. So that's from like age 23 all the way to like age 36. Hmm. Okay. Wow. So I'd worked constantly. I would guest star. I would yeah. get close every time I was on the list. Did you know that there are lists? I didn't realize this till after I got off of Good Luck Charlie. Yeah, Listed. you can be on the bad list. Yes, oh. because yeah. uh-huh. there sometimes you're on the list, and sometimes you're not on the list. Mm-hmm. I want to know who makes the list. I do too. <laughs> who I, makes yeah. that list? Yeah. Hmm. How come I was on it then? Hmm. I'm not on it now, or I'm on it now and wasn't on it then. Like, how? Yeah. When do you get on the list, and who has that list? Well, I don't know. I don't know if you're right because I hear that Hollywood's very, very forthright. And honest <laughs> and legitimate. That's the funniest thing I've heard all year long. <laughs> oh, I, I know all about the blacklists and yeah, and, and all the stuff that goes on over there. It's it's, it's pretty it's pretty crazy. Crazy. Mm-hmm. It's a crazy business. I was on a list when um, I was pursuing acting when I was a kid, and uh, you know I don't know if it still works like this, but you got to get three SAG things in order to get your SAG card. What do you call those things? Taft, you got to get Taft Hartley or something right, like that. Right. Or, or someone Taft Hartley's you and pays you to just be in. Yeah. I just got paid to put in. I did a movie that, just, that they put me in. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. And I remember getting uh, in Stockton, California. Yeah. There was a movie that they were filming and I was a part of it. And oh I was so gosh. It was starring huge stars. Mark Paul Gosler from Saved by the Bell. Oh my God. And um, Tom Everett Scott from uh, uh, that thing you do yes. with Tom, you know. And um, anyway, I was a part of this uh, this shoot for like uh, two weeks or something like that, and it was great. We had a great time, and first time I ever did anything like that. And then I moved to L.A. when they moved the set from Stockton back to L.A. to do all the interior stuff. Uh, me and a buddy of mine decided to move there and uh, get an apartment, so we did, and that was my that was the beginning of my you know pursuit of what'd you think hollywood um the there was it was it was really different than anything i had experienced before um and uh you know it was just really weird um yeah i remember going to a party once and there was like i don't want to name names there was every star you could imagine that was there and i was like what am i doing here right yeah 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 yeah, and i had to go use the bathroom i opened the bathroom and i was like that is so weird why were people why would you be snorting powder like i was like why <laughs> would you, you it's cr- i mean i literally thought yeah. someone had taken like loose powder that we take down our shine with and put it in line oh. and was like sniffing it for some reason i wow. had no idea oh yeah God. i had no idea yeah. i remember someone come up to me going put this piece of paper on your tongue and i was like i'm not eating paper who eats paper <laughs> and then i find out like 10 years later that that was acid and i was like yeah. they put that, it on paper that is right i didn't know that <laughs> It's like all these things. I just, that was not my world. Right. It was right. not my world. I just yeah. really, truly loved acting. I didn't even want to be famous per se. I was that little girl that wanted to be in the pageant, but I didn't want everybody looking at yeah. me. Right. You know, I just enjoy doing what I do. 
Oh my gosh. Did you ever call home and be like, mom, dad, there's powdered sugar paper. Oh there's stuff. my gosh. All this stuff is going. I, I will tell you that one time when I was driving in to go to USC, it was like my senior year or something. And I was living off campus and I was driving in and I went from a place that had clear blue skies and you could just see, you could see houses, you could see everything you could see yes. for miles and miles, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. To a place that was so polluted with smog that you couldn't see your hand before your face sometimes. And I remember pulling off on the side of the road and using a payphone using a payphone uh. to call my mom and say, did you know that there are mountains with houses on them all around Los Angeles? I had never been mm. able to see because the smog was so bad, those beautiful foothill mountains and those oh. gorgeous homes that were there. And God. I was just so taken aback the day that I saw that them. You could actually see, which is that rare, I could see right? them, which is rare. Yeah. That yeah. I called my mom and was like, this is, it's so beautiful here because it is such a beautiful state. It yeah. is, yeah. Oh, it definitely. is for sure. Yeah. We lived in Huntington Beach for like seven years and just, oh my gosh. It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So were your parents ever like skeptical of what you were doing or were they just supportive or? Well, my dad luckily had this friend named Lee Anderson who was in business with him and he was a really smart, smart businessman. And he said to my dad, you know, uh, you know, he basically talked him into it one night over a beer and said, if my daughter was this skilled at something, I would back her a hundred percent. And so that's what my dad did. He thought, well, if Lee Anderson would support her, I'm going to invest in her too. Oh, okay. you know? mm. So then I majored in theater and that kind of helped me get my feet wet. And then I just kind of, I took off. I was very lucky. I was very fortunate. I did it the good old fashioned way. I got auditions you know, I, I mm -hmm. sent out headshots and resumes and did plays and people came to see me mm -hmm. and I got an agent and then I got auditions and then I got jobs. It was pretty much your classic standard way of doing it. I didn't sleep with anybody. Yeah. I didn't know anybody who knew somebody. Yeah. I just auditioned. But did you, did you register with um, like casting companies or, you know, like extras? Did you, were you ever like, did no. you want to work that way or anything or no? You just... Mm -mm. So did you have to get a manager right away or an agent or something like that? I got like an agent you... pretty much right away. Okay. And that then they got me auditions. And then then there was one time where it truly luck does come <clears> to play in it. There was, there was a time where I was walking on the lot at Paramount and I was going to some voiceover job. And as I'm walking, literally this casting director comes out for this show, Almost Perfect. And he cast friends, Jeff Greenberg. He, he cast big things. Mm -hmm. And he comes out and goes, you... I said, yes. He goes, you're an actress. And I said, yeah. And he goes, come here. Could you read this? And they had to fire someone last minute on this show who just, it was like this last minute scramble and they needed someone to come into work the next day. And I read it. And then he's like, don't move. And then he pulls me into a room with a bunch of producers. I was literally on my way to my car and I read it and they're all dying laughing. And the next thing you know, I'm, I'm on a set. Wow. I, wow. I mean, it was that fast. So it just happened. Like, yeah, it just happened. Like, wow. That's crazy. That was wild. I did. I was an extra in a lot of stuff. And I, that's how I got paid. And, I never and, did that. I never did that. I always felt bad for extras because I was always it's like, are you guys hungry? Do you need food from craft services? Yeah, no, it's a little embarrassing sometimes to talk to a real actor <laughs> and be like, you know, I was a professional extra. <laughs> but But it's a real thing. Yeah. And you can make so much money, at least you could back then. Yeah. Back then it was a lot of money. I don't know. But it was, uh, you would register with like a calling service. And these are the companies that would, um, they would make sure that you were submitted for everything. And they would call you. And I would have my little Motorola pager, you know. Oh, my gosh. It's kind of like jury duty. So, you're going to get the call or not? Yeah, you're driving <laughs> and then you got, oh, oh, 911. Oh, I know what that means. You pull over, really? get on a pay phone. You know, you're hoping for the best and they tell you, hey, you got booked on tomorrow, blah, blah, blah. Okay, great. Well, I was, you know, I would have these jobs every single day. I mean, every day. Wow. And you get paid, you get a check every single day. So pretty soon when it catches up, you're getting all these checks all the yeah, time. Yeah, that's not a bad gig. That sounds like so much fun, honestly. I would do that. It honestly really was really fun at the time. Sherry did it. Experiencing different oh. sets. Sherry did it. She didn't do it like moving to LA and, and doing it, but my wife did it. And uh, she did it, I think, mostly when they like uh, came to her area and stuff like yeah. that, you know. But they, um, we did it for a while, and then, but then everybody gets sick of it for a while. You're you're an extra. You're watching the actors get treated all nice and yeah, everything. I know. That's why I felt bad for extras because 
like, sometimes <laughs> Thank I'd be you. like, there, she's freezing. <laughs> she's going to pass out. Like, can I give her water? Right. It's wrong, you know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's where I learned my lesson, don't be an extra, because I was like, you, I do not want to sit in the freezing cold with no food and water, you know? But you remember how you said that somebody pulled you in a room and they, you know, and all this kind of stuff, yeah. and then it started. Well, so I was, I went out to be an extra on this movie that they made called Pleasantville. Yes, and, I remember Pleasantville. And uh, they built an entire 1950s a town, set, a town right yeah. in in uh, the mountains where they shot mash and all of this stuff mm-hmm. right in like kind of calabasas yeah, area i know what the area it is and i went and uh my friend was there we got booked on the same show and uh there was like a hundred of us and we all had we were like the 1950s thugs okay, the like mean yeah, guys yeah. right i'm gonna have to watch so, this movie now again yeah pleasantville <laughs> so we're sitting there in this lineup and they're like hey we, get, we need you guys to stand over here I'm like oh what's going on you know and Gary uh, Ross, I think, the director, comes over and he starts like looking at uh, whatever, and he he points at me. and goes, "You, you, come here, follow me." Same thing happens. So we go with him, and we're like, we don't really know what's going on, but this is probably a good thing. So we go over, and he goes, uh, "We're gonna have you here." And he just kind of tells us what to do. Here's the scene. He gives us sides and everything. Like that's how fast it wow, happened. Wow, and then they're in a scene. That was supposed to be like that day and the following day, and that's it. And so that led to like three weeks of being in these different scenes because now we got to be throughout the whole movie in these small groups because Toby Maguire comes in. Yeah. And he like knocks somebody out, you know, and we're there and we're his like his little minion thugs, you know, and everything. And it was really kind of a fun thing. Then you start getting excited. Then you're like, right about the time you're ready to like quit being an extra, you're like, I know, kind of feels like your big break. Right. You know, it That's feels, the, feels that pretty is good. the trickery with the whole business. There was a pilot season where I tested for 13 pilots and got second on all of them. Oh wow. 13 pilots. Wow. Do you know what that does to your adrenal system to be like, I'm so close. I'm so close. Oh, oh I'm so close. Oh, man. I'm so close. Oh, what? That oh. was the year that I think they just felt so bad for me with Will and Grace that, um, cause I had tested for, um, Megan's part, Karen. Mm. So Karen Walker was originally, um, a young girl fresh out of college who had rich parents Mm-hmm. and they couldn't find anyone to test against me, or at least that's the story I was told, because I made it past the first test session, but nobody else did. Mm-hmm. So they sent them out to find more people and maybe revamp the part, and then they went in a direction which was an older married woman with a rich husband, mm. which was a brilliant decision because Megan Mullally is absolutely fantastic. Mm-hmm. And was great in that role. Um, so they gave me, they called me up and they said, listen, we're not going to need you for Karen but we want you to play Ellen, Grace's best friend. Mm. And, you know, would you be interested in that? And so that's when, you know, I met up with Tom Gallup, who played my husband on that show. And so they kind of, it was a nice gift at the end of a very harsh, brutal gotcha. pilot season. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah, that's good. That's super good. So how, what is the role that you've played that you're, it doesn't have to be even a lot of episodes, but what is the one role that you think you've done that you're the most proud of or that you enjoyed the most? Um, I did an episode of Early Edition. Do you remember that show, Early Edition? It it rings a bell. So Early Edition was where this guy gets a newspaper a day early with the events that are going to unfold, and he tries to stop it. What a great idea for a show. It was a great idea for a show. It was a great show. I I never watched it, but I saw the trailer when it was getting ready to, to air. It was a great show, and I did a very... Uh, I did a guest starring episode that was a very heavy guest star. I mean, I was in every scene pretty much. And it was about this girl from Ireland who had won a lottery ticket and Mm. was coming over to the United States and the ticket gets lost and she's trying to find it for all these. It was a really um, interesting episode. And um, I shot for like two weeks in Chicago. And that was the first time that I felt Chicago wind and was like, whoa, it's really cold here. So you had fun with that episode? I was, that was one that of my character. favorite roles that I've done. And then I would say the other one that I really loved is I really like Bad Hair Day. Yeah. Bad Hair Day was a really fun one, playing a cop. So, you mm-hmm. know, what people think of as being very different from me, but personality-wise, the character was not that different from me. Mm-hmm. Um, it was kind of that other side of me that doesn't want to be seen, doesn't want to be followed, doesn't want to mm-hmm. be looked at. That, mm-hmm. It was just mm-hmm. the other side. Amy Duncan is the one side of my personality. And then yeah. Liz from Bad Hair Day was really the other. What one. were you like as a kid? What what were you, were you like, were you good? 
Were you, did he get in trouble all the time? I you feel like around? I was in trouble all the time, but my mom says I was actually pretty good. Oh. <laughs> but I felt like I was always in trouble. I mean, I was always doing something I shouldn't have been doing. At least I was oh. being told that. That's what you feel like as a kid, though. I'm sure every kid feels like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I was just headstrong and wanted to do things my way. Mm-hmm. And as long as you let me do them my way, I'm sure things went very smoothly <laughs> <Did> you, <laughs> for did you all ever, involved. Did you ever do that one thing, though, that like got you into trouble that you remember? that you remember you shouldn't have done? There's a lot of things that I shouldn't have done that got me in trouble, but um, I was a biter. <laughs> oh, you were a biter? I was a biter because I had older boy cousins and a boy, and an older brother, yeah. and they were just so much stronger than me that I found a shortcut, you know? I could just bite them, and we could end it right there. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's for sure. Mike Tyson believes worked. the same thing. It worked. I, I mean, it. game over. It was done, you know? <clears throat> made a little, <laughs> sorry. And they made, had, made a little joke there. Yeah. Oh, I, Mike no Tyson. Mike Tyson believed the same thing. Because yeah, he bit an ear off. See, Did you know he, that? There was a situation that he happened was a with boxer. him a long time ago. Yeah, bit he, the ear. exactly. Yeah, mm-hmm. show her. Yeah, do it. That's what he did. He did. <laughs> he bit someone. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. I just wanted to make sure, give yeah, everybody an opportunity to listen to my. Yeah, but you kept talking as if. Well, because hey. you know. Okay, it was funny, but it wasn't my favorite funny of yours. So Ooh. when it's my favorite funny of yours, I mean, I give pause, okay, right? Go ahead. You but can I was continue. kind of like go on ahead. a Keep roll. Talking. I was on a roll. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm the bad guy. Now I screwed it up. You're right. Fair. Fair enough. <laughs> what was I even doing? Oh, biting. 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 You're a biter. I'm a biter. Mm-hmm. So I learned not to bite because mm. my grandmother, who I loved so much more than anything, grabbed my arm and said, come here to me. And she picked up my arm after I bit my cousin Uh and she bit me really hard. Wow. Really? Yes. Wow. And I never bit again. (laughs) Not because I learned what kind of pain I was inflicting on the guys, but because I knew that my grandmother would bite me back. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But it worked. I stopped. Wow. I had to do that to Madison when she was little. Oh my. And, but she never learned her lesson. I would do it every single. So we had to do it all the way up till she was like 15. You know, I was still biting her, but. <laughs> so what, what were your, did you get, you didn't get punished a lot? Were your parents like not really punishers? No, I got punished. You know, they did spankings. We were the generation where you got, you got the belt, you know, yeah. mm-hmm. for rough housing, usually annoying. Now when you say generation, um, that's no longer a thing. Yeah, you're not. We're not supposed to hit our kids. We're not supposed to. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right. that's like not, that's we're not fine. supposed to do that. Okay. I remember saying right. to my husband once, "Well, what are we gonna do? We can't hit him because then we go to jail." <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, you start freaking out about this stuff because you're watching <laughs> Lifetime movies and stuff. And I remember one time Jackson, we were scared to death because Jackson was up at the fireplace. Well, he got a little close to the fireplace. He burned like he had a little burn <gasps> spot on his chest, you know, and he got a little and he started screaming and we ran in. What happened? And he got a little burn there. Right. We're like, oh, what should we do? You know, it didn't look that bad, but we we're still concerned. He was crying. And so we brought him in. We're scared to death. We're like, yes. they're going to take him away from us. Yes, <laughs> they're going to th- think we like put iron on him or something like yes. that, you know, because you don't know these people. You see, you hear these horror stories. Correct. Yeah. It's, so it's scary. scary. The moral of the story is. Don't take your kids to the doctor. Right. You, That's right. You never know. Because you could go I'm, to jail. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Um, so uh, I'm going to ask you a fun, fun question. Oh, good. Okay. What, what's the, uh, what, you can eat one thing for the rest of your life. What is it? Okay. One thing. One. I one cannot thing pick only. three. And it's got to be, it can't be, you know, like dinner and dessert. It's got to be one or the other. One thing, rest of your life, the only thing. It's got, is it like one specific food? Yeah. What well, what else like would you eat meal. for the rest of your life? Like a meal? Are you saying like a meal? Or are you saying like it could, a fruit? A vegetable? Well, if I said a meal, that would be multiple things. That would be okay. I would no, have like steak, potatoes. Uh, like, See, like, like we're on entree. different pages here. We're you on wanna, different pages, kids. Wait, okay. You want to do an entree? Like, well, like a full what, meal? What are you supposed to say? Like spaghetti and meatballs or like an well, orange? Then, Does spaghetti and meatballs <laughs> count as it one food? Right. Of course. It's because who food. eats spaghetti without meat? Uh, a lot of people. Really? Yeah. yeah. Marinara sauce. That's, I know. I understand <laughs> marinara sauce. But isn't meat like one of the... Wait. Well, the point is, when you have a... I would have said entree. If, uh, so one no food, like, like in other words, like a normal answer would be <laughs> hamburgers for the rest okay, of my so life. Okay. Or, okay. or pizza. But I wouldn't be mad at spaghetti and meat balls. 
spaghetti and Pause meatballs. For no reason there. Okay. okay. Well. Okay. This is tough because I have food items. Now what does that? I, now we're. What does that mean? Like there's certain foods that I like, like mangoes. I could probably live on mangoes. That's fine. That's a great answer. Mangoes. Mangoes. That's really? my number one food. No oh. kidding. Did you know I never had a mango until recently? Really? No. A few years ago, probably. And I was They're like, amazing. oh, this is pretty good. Yeah. And you've never had an eggplant, which is my second favorite food. And you've never had one. And I'm going to feed you one How my is garden. an eggplant your second favorite food? It's so good. You can just slice it, dice it, prepare it all different ways. And it tastes like meat almost sometimes. It's the complete really? opposite I've of a mango, I'm pretty sure. It's not the mango. Yeah. Um, I wanted to try a mango one time when I watched um, a movie called Splash. Yes. Because he missed so mango on my <laughs> shoulder. <laughs> I'm like, oh, maybe I should try a mango. It's so good. Yeah, I like it now. There's a lot of stuff that I didn't try till I got married. Oh, really? Were you a yes. picky eater? Um, yeah, I would say so. My mom would make things that weren't like new to my taste buds. I was uh, familiar with them from when I was little. So after I got married, I had things like an artichoke. Oh, it's so good. Never had an artichoke before. Now, oh my gosh, They're can't so get good. enough of them, right? And then I wait till everybody... But the leaves, I don't do the leaves because... It's like a little, it's like you're teasing me with the leaf. Oh, so you just you know, dig right to the heart? Oh, I just, yeah, I rip the things off or I let everybody else in the family eat the leaves. And then you come and, then and I went, steal the treat at the very end? Clean it up. <gasps> and, <gasps> amazing. You're taking the best part. Like, oh, that's, nobody else will eat it because it's too artichokey for everybody else in the family. Really? But me. Yeah. But I like that rich. All right. Oh, it's so good. We're going to have to grill artichokes and eggplant oh. with mango salsa. Sherry would not be mad at that. I'm just saying. That's her favorite thing. We, the first thing she does on the menu when we go out to eat is uh, she sees that fire grilled artichoke. Yes. Like, oh, that's for me. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's true. Love it. Eggplant. So what do you do with an eggplant? I'm just curious. I see it in the grocery store. They okay. sell it in the produce department. It is in the produce department. And I usually slice it. Yeah. And then I just put a little olive oil, salt, and pepper and Raw, roast it in the oven. It? Roast it. Oh, you roast it in the oven. Yes. You can also saute it in a pan. No kidding. Mm -hmm. And they, is, they absorb a lot of liquid, so I use a little bit of oil and more water, and you can steam them. You can make ratatouille with it. What is ratatouille? Oh, that's like an. That's like a. Uh, it's like zucchini, onion, oh, tomato, yeah. eggplant. Zucchini, onion, tomato, eggplant. And then you put some garlic in it, some sauce on it. Oh, it's what so kind good. of meat is in there? There's no meat. Then why would you eat it? What What is this called, thing called? It's called ratatouille. Ratatouille. Like the movie. Like the movie. It's an old Italian peasant dish, and it's so good. And that's why, because it's a peasant dish. It doesn't have meat in it. Really? Yeah. You could put a meat sauce on it, but that's not classic ratatouille. I'm just trying to imagine eating something that's been concocted together like that with no meat. I'm going to make it for you. All right. Out of my garden. I would do that just for the simple fact that it came out of your garden. Yep. That'd out be great. Out of my garden. I'm I would love that. fresh ratatouille. That sounds great. Would you eat that? Did that sound Absolutely. Appealing? That sounds it's amazing. so good. Yeah. <laughs> Listen to this. We got to go to lunch. Yeah. It's amazing how open-minded my kids are to food because I've always been sort of like a one-track, you know what I mean? Boring. Keep really? like meat and potatoes. Meat and potatoes, baby. That's it. Meat and potatoes. But the kids, they grew up with this incredible like, yeah, I'll try that. I'll try that. I'll try that. I think all of them. That's great. Yeah. I have one that's a foodie and one that is not. One that is like his dad. Really? Yeah. I'm a foodie, but the thing is, is... I know what kind of foodie I like. Grilled you know? cheese. Huh? This man makes the best grilled cheese sandwich you will ever <laughs> taste in your entire life. I'm just going to say it right here and now. Thank That's you very true. much. <laughs> it's true. I appreciate that. You're making me look bad in front of my kids. They're like, Mom, we want a grilled cheese like Jack's. I'm like, <laughs> I cannot help Listen, you. Only Jack can make that grilled only cheese. Only Jack makes Jack's grilled cheeses. That's right. <laughs> um, so uh, my daughter. Yes. Jasmine, my yes. other daughter. Um, talks to um, your son quite a bit because they're yes. all friends. Jackson too, mm -hmm. and um, Jasmine and and Griffin were talking the other night, mm -hmm. and um, Griffin was like super stoked because he wanted a hairstyle, a new kind of a hairstyle. <laughs> and uh, and Jasmine came in the room and she's like, "Dad, Griffin wants to get a uh, a mullet." Mm -hmm. And I got all jazz. I'm like, a mullet. That's awesome, right? <laughs> and I'm thinking my hair is kind of growing out too. I'm like, maybe I should get a mullet. Business in the front, party, party in, in the, the back. back. <laughs> so so 
I'm like, really? She goes, yeah. She goes, uh, he's really excited about it and all this kind of stuff. Um, and then you told me the next day that a mullet's not really what you think it is. It's like a little different. Yeah, it's different. So no. they've got this thing called a modern mullet. Modern mullet. That's because it. when he said he wanted me to give him a mullet, I was like, not happening. Not mm. happening. Yeah. I immediately start pulling up pictures of Billy Ray Cyrus and I'm like, do you want to look like this? Like, yeah. I cannot in good conscience give you this haircut. Right? Yeah, yeah. So he's like, no. And so I said, find me pictures. Yeah. And so he loves these YouTubers, um, Brock and Boston. Do you know them? Anybody know them? No? I know them because they live near me. But okay. they're the sweetest okay. guys ever. Okay. And they're very, they're very funny, good guys. Uh-huh. And so he follows them and he, they've got great hair. So he wanted this haircut. So he's been to a hairdresser once. Mm -hmm. And that was, you guys know the end result mm -hmm. of this. You know, my son was in tears. He was traumatized. I mean, he showed her a picture of this long haircut and he had long hair and she chopped all of his hair off. And the mm. advice was, you just need to let it grow in. And he was like, but you cut it off. You know, yeah. he was devastated. Oh. So oh. I cut his hair. Yes, I know. So I'm the hairdresser in my household. Mm. It, they went to hairdressers when they were little, and after they would demolish their hair and I would have to redo it, I finally thought, why am I paying someone to cut their hair when I have to redo it anyway? So I just always cut their hair. So he wanted a modern mullet, so we did it. We shaved the sides. I did a graduated fade, and then it's kind of bushy in the front and on the top. Yeah. And yeah. It looks great. He's happy with it. It looks good. I don't think that they should be called modern mullets. I think they should be called a modified mohawk, personally. <laughs> okay. I think it is a modified faux hawk type situation that's going on. Uh-huh. But uh -huh. either way, he's very happy, which whew, makes me very happy. How long have you been doing hair? Okay. So when I went to study Shakespeare at the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts, and uh -huh. um, I, I went and studied it in London. Uh -huh. No, at Oxford University. That's where I studied. I did a little bit of study in London, too, but I went to Oxford University. And um, I ran out of money mm. because um, I did. I just ate and drank too much there. <laughs> Basically, the world wow. was my oyster. My dad had only given me so much money, and I ran out. My dad said, you ran out of money. Don't you call me. You just figure it out on your own. Oh. So uh, we'd been there long enough for People started needing haircuts. And I said, I'll cut your hair. I thought, how bad can it be? If you're an artist, you know, geometry, like how hard can it be to cut hair? <laughs> the trouble was I didn't have scissors. All I had was a Swiss Army pocket knife, those <laughs> tiny little scissors. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. I, those can make you bleed because I cut a guy's <laughs> around the ear so <laughs> bad wow. that I was like, oh, let me just... I'll just, just, he's like, oh, I think you pulled a hair. I'm like, yeah, pulled a hair. He's like gushing blood, you know? Oh my God. But uh, I cut hair and I made enough money to get back on track. In... Without being an experienced, yeah. educated hairstylist. Yeah. Wow. Because I'm an actor wow. and I acted like I knew what I was doing. Wow. That, see, that's, that's the key to You're life. just good at everything. Just act like, see, well, my mother says surgery. that I am a jack of all trades, master of none, which pretty much sums up my oh, entire career. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's great. Yeah, totally get that. Uh, would you uh, Would you ever be in a prank show? Oh, yeah. Is that up your alley, that's would you totally say? totally up my alley. Yeah, okay. Come on, Jack. I might have to think about that. Come on, we got a team yeah. up. Are we at an hour? Okay. All right. Cool. That's okay. That doesn't mean we're done. It just means, you know, we're yeah. at an hour and we, we've got to get to an hour. Um, yeah, I, you know what? I, I really love, I love what I do, but I wonder sometimes if like, you know, there's people out there, actors who might want to be in a prank show and we might have to put something like that together, especially somebody who likes to be, you know, goofy and fun and stuff I like mean, that. I mean, I think I've drawn my line today in this interview. I won't do porn, but otherwise you've made it very open clear to pranks. <laughs> Crystal, crystal clear. <laughs> just wanted to reaffirm everybody. Reiterate that. Uh, yeah, so let's do it. That would be hilarious. Okay, yeah, it really would be fun. Um, have you, be on, now be honest with me. Yeah, okay. How many, not that this is about me, I just want to ask mm -hmm. you one question okay. about me. How many videos of mine have you seen? I've if seen quite a few because, yeah, few? because the first night that we went to dinner at your house and I kind of, okay, so my Sherry, my BFF over there. Yeah. I love Sherry. Yeah. Yeah. So, right. um, I went to dinner at your house and you guys, you started showing me some videos and they were so funny. Oh yeah. The one where you put her on a leash. Yeah. I, 
I could not even. Like, sweet little Sherry. Like, I don't know. Sometimes he lets me out in the backyard without it. You know, it was so, it was gold. It was comedic genius that I was like, we've got to go home and have a Jack Vale night. So yeah. then Keith and I and the kids, we all sit around and uh, start watching your videos. So, oh, that's awesome. So, yeah, and they know a little bit more about you than you think. That's great. <laughs> Um, I have a riddle for you. Oh my! Uh, let me let me think of how this one how this goes. It's a okay. good one. It's a good one. Just okay. gotta get just gotta make sure that I get it right. I think you've heard this one before. The horse's name was Friday. What? Come on! <laughs> what, is, you know? what does that no. mean? Say it, you guys. Okay, just kidding. Never mind. People listening will know what I mean. People will know what you mean by the <laughs> oh, horse's name on yes. Friday. Out. Yeah, <laughs> the horse's name. I don't it's get the it. riddle. It's like the guy. Uh, I don't even remember the riddle, but I remember the answer because that's the answer. But it's like this guy rides into a town on Monday and he leaves on Friday, but he only stays for like two days. How did he leave on Friday if he only stayed for two days? The horse's, the horse's name. name was Friday. Oh, I get it. Like okay, I'm surprised you didn't know that. No, that makes, uh, no, that makes perfect sense now. I wouldn't have got it. <laughs> like most I riddles, got it. when it's they're good. revealed, they make total sense. <laughs> right. Except for my son. <laughs> Baker's always yeah. trying to come up with these riddles, and I'm like, hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that was interesting. <laughs> um, a, man, a man runs over his wife. Okay. Whose fault was it? A man runs over his wife. Whose fault was it? Mm-hmm. Take as much time as you need. Okay. Now I have questions. Okay. With a car? I'm you're not supposed to know <laughs> anything else other than a man runs over his wife. Whose fault was it? It's not that deep. <laughs> it was it's not that deep. <laughs> okay, it was his fault. You're right, because he had no business driving in the kitchen. All right, everybody, that's it for the Jack Vale Show. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, my gosh. Uh, uh, one day I'm going to get in trouble. Um, I got a million of them. All right, bring them out. Uh, the reason I it popped into my head, by the way, is because I did probably one of my favorite things is uh, I did this video one time with Chris called The Male Chauvinist Dad. It was Dad. the best. Oh, was, you saw it? Uh, that's the, yes, it was the best. Oh, my gosh. It was the best. Those women, the way that they looked at you, and <clears throat> in particular, there were two ladies sitting at a table. I actually couldn't believe how generous and sweet they were with you. Of Like, you better yeah, love your wife. This is how wife. you treat. You, how you treat. Yeah, they woman. were so sweet. I would have been like, listen, idiot. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. So I was so impressed with, it was, first of all, it was hilarious. But their response was so <laughs> sweet and genuine, and it gave you so much grace when you did not deserve it. <laughs> yeah, for real. It was so much fun because, like you said earlier, like being able to play something that you're not, like something really far yes. removed from who you are, really is fun. That was probably something that was the hard. That was probably the hardest video I ever made. Was uh, was doing those? People ask me why, but it's just because it's. I mean, listen to what you're saying. Yeah. Like, and if you're listening, you have no idea what I'm talking about. Male Chauvinist Dad is a video I made where I gave my son fatherly advice in public where people around me could hear. Things like, don't let a woman out of the kitchen, son. You know, she needs to spend most of her time in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> the country started going downhill when uh, women started voting, right. which yeah. I do not believe for the record. No. <laughs> I want to be very clear. Uh, but it was it was fun to do that anyway. Thank you so much for, uh, for being here, for yeah, coming and everything pleasure. like that. I'm so glad you did. Anytime. Thank you for listening to the Jack Vale show with Madison. I feel like the most you talked, by the way, in this interview was at the end here about the horse. With the riddle. The yeah. Horse and the riddle. About well, the horse. I love listening. Yeah, she's a good yeah. listener. And yeah. I'm a talker. She's you were a good, good listener. Good Maybe listener. we could learn yeah. a thing or two from her. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I was just very interested. Especially Are, learning about, like, I don't know, the industry and stuff from you. It's really interesting. Yeah, you know what? I agree. Yeah. That was really, really fun. Thank you. Yeah. Come back. I will. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you later. See ya. Bye.